Julie and Eugene, can you talk a little bit about what the original plan for the film was and whether it included the full story that it ended up well, manifesting? Well, I think originally we, we also, we had filmed very few of them because we sort of meant for it to be this thing that sort of happened and disappeared, but always thought about recording it at some point or maybe making a documentary. And there was one year that we sort of filmed properly, um, that, except for the final year. And then, uh, so, so we'd always vaguely thought of doing it. And then we, and then our li the, my life and Katie's life sort of became a part of it. So it wasn't, uh, Julie, do you want to talk about it? She directed it, so really this is more for her. I don't know why I'm <laughs> no, giving such <laughs> detail. <laughs> No, I think that's right. We, we sort of originally imagined it being more of a, a farewell concert film when we talked about it years ago, and then as the festival was coming to an end, it felt really important and uh, organic to, to talk about really why it was ending, and uh, Eugene and Katie were generous enough to share that part of the story with us. Katie, do you, do you want to talk about what that experience was like for you, just like realizing that you had become part of the story all of a sudden? Here. Uh, no. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I, I think I didn't realize that it was happening until like three weeks ago and then the film was done. Uh -huh. um, it, it was kind of hard throughout the process. I think I was a big pain in the ass. Because um, when I saw cuts of it, I was like, wait, that's not exactly what I'm experiencing. And mm. I think it's an impossible thing to try to translate in an hour and 15 minutes. So I think that Julie and everyone did an amazing job of bringing those two things together. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was, it actually was kind of a cathartic experience in general. Can you talk about the choice to like include you bombing? I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it had to be there, it's, but it's horrible to watch for me. I think for other people, they're like, eh. But for me, it's like, ah! Yeah. No, it's uncomfortable. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. It's pretty horrific. <laughs> this was actually going to, I was going to ask you next. Like, what, what was it like from sort of this, this group of people who have been around and, and part of the festival for this period of time to kind of watch this, um, to, to watch Eugene go through this? Uh, bombing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that too, but no, you, yeah. Um, well, it's, you know, uh, Katie and Eugene, they just, uh, you know, they have gigantic hearts, so um, it's, it's hard and lovely and life reaffirming and sad and just everything but you know it's it's the 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 movie's a testament behind the scenes too to the kind of people that gravitate towards them yeah you know um i was struck by that just how many people like everybody has wonderful things to say about you and i was like is that is that real well, we I mean, were. It's, you see, we were nice. paid I mean, really you know, well. It's, it's <laughs> stressful to watch, and I don't. Well, uh, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, you'd have to ask them again <laughs> and make another movie. So, so Eugene, are you awesome <laughs> or not? There's a it's whole other documentary. Let's paraphrase that. <laughs> um, uh, I had another question for Julie, just about the the footage. Um, you guys have obviously been sort of collaborating for a little while, um, maybe a long while, right? Um, yeah, probably like years? 15 years or so. You, you were gathering footage, obviously, but there is also you, like the period at which the festival was happening, the period during which the festival happened. Um, obviously, it sort of struck me that, that everybody has phones and is like taking footage and we see some of that in the movie it seems like um from the first kiss to to some other stuff so what was it like trying to compile all of that stuff there wasn't actually a lot of footage we only filmed one year of it because we really never we sort of wanted it to be a really easy festival for comedians and not add mm. pressure so so we didn't have cameras around um we also again really didn't we, we started it as just a fun thing we were doing on the side. Mm. Um, so it was actually kind of hard to gather footage. 
we did find, you know. You fooled me, clearly. Yeah, we had this one guy that used to every year, he'd say, do you want me to film the festival? And I'm like, nope, don't need it. <laughs> um, so he, he is the one that filmed the one year with Ira Glass. Mm. Um, and he had a couple of other shows. But the rest was really people in, like, people in the audience and friends having photos. Katie's friends had a lot of photos. That's where the first kiss photo came from. Yeah, and that was a clip, like a point and shoot camera camera. I was wondering. I was going to yeah, ask. Yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah. a cell phone. I mean, it looks. It was an old yeah. fangled. Okay. Yeah, it was a Fair. real camera. Fair. Yeah, yeah, that was the problem is that no one had, no one was taking video with their phones. Mm. Um, so even, you know, backstage stuff, we didn't have much. Um, but that's good. We fooled you because <laughs> it was a challenge. Eugene, you talk about how. Um, it became unsustainable both for kind of the family situation, but also it seemed like you were hinting at it was like too weird or... It, no, it was just, well... You, you, you mentioned that it wasn't very profitable. Let me put it that it's way. It's more that like, it used to be that everyone could just take a cab to this place and now we're like flying people in, but we're not, there's, we're not changing the venue or raising ticket prices. Right. Like we played this at, at, at South By and there was someone in the audience who was like, why don't you just do it in a stadium? <laughs> But it was like, we're not actually, it's not that we don't know how to make, like, we're not trying to figure out how can we make money off of John Oliver. <laughs> like, like, we're just doing this fun thing. So it's more right. that, like, that has a cap in the amount of time it takes, and we both live here now, mm -hmm. and it's just, like, it, it, it just used to be easier, and now it's, like, it's just so, it's months and months of work that's fun, but just not sustainable. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's not that it was so weird. It, it was, it wasn't like it was so weird. It was not hard to get people to come to these fun shows, but it was just too much. Doritos was calling. You were just if not they, If up. they had been like, you can keep it here and you can have $1.8 million, I'd be like, okay, we'll think about it. <laughs> Fair. What is the community of the people who go? Uh, well, one person during the drunk show did get a tattoo of me on their shoulder, which I tried to talk him out of. But the best is that he came to the festival three years later, but the show was sold out, but he went to the door and said, um, I actually got a tattoo of Eugene. So they came and found me and said, can we let him in? I'm like, yes, please. You can let him into the show. <laughs> so I, I think that speaks a little bit. But the, the audiences in Brooklyn were so great, and I'm sure people were coming from other places. But uh, Michael Che sort of alludes to that where... Everyone was ready to laugh, so I think that's why, that is why we kept doing it. I mean, we were having fun, but also yeah. people were showing up and buying tickets. And, and, and also appreciated the silly things, and then we would have a pig roast every year. That was her husband Chet's idea. I think in the second year, we had a pig roast on the sidewalk, and then we had to do it every year. <laughs> that's it, another reason why it wasn't financially. <laughs> probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we would do a whole free pig roast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I once tried to... I signed an autograph on a woman's arm and then she had it tattooed and I tried to talk her out of it and I was like, I go, because she was really drunk and I go, what are you going to do if you sober up and you realize you don't think I'm funny anymore? And she said, I'll add sucks. Eugene, are you doing any more work? I, so I think that the calendar that I made for 2017, I'm going to guess, or so, yeah, 16 or 17, I bet there's some on my website for sale still, and no one knows about them, and no one would think to buy them because they're several years old. So I have no other work right now, but please enjoy my old calendar. <laughs> I have. Oh, well, it's, it's, you asked more Cape Cod theme work, meaning will I do shows on the Cape, or do I, will I make more Cape-based items? Cape Are you updating items. the calendar? He's got a, I will well, maybe make, maybe. <laughs> He's got a whole chunk Maybe I'll write squares on seashells and scatter them across <laughs> Falmouth. Have you ever heard from the people that own that store that you put that in? That Very store, good. I have a photo of it. That store is this little store called Staples. <laughs> <laughs> they had a big row of Mom calendars. And, and then I went into another and... Uh, What's so funny is I was like trying to fit it in. It was like a little big. And then I was like, oh, maybe I should take it. But then I got really anxious because then it would look like I was stealing their yeah. calendar. And so I just kind of like left it awkwardly and like ran away. And they're like, that is a weird man. It's amazing. 
Does it have barcodes on the back of it? No, I just, I just like wrote on a sticker $40 and just put it on. And <laughs> Is that in the zone of the other calendar prices? I don't even know. It just seemed right. It was the, it was, it, you know, it's like this big, so that felt fair. That feels it like 40. It felt excessive. Like, I, yeah. wouldn't, I would have sold it for 30, but <laughs> I was like, Cape Cod, let's get some money into this community. You were probably responsible for a hellish price check. <laughs> People are still in that line. Yeah. Price check. So the idea is someone looked through the whole thing and then was like, $25. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go argue with Staples. 